Hey guys, Nick Tyree here uh, with my race report for the Badger Mountain Challenge 100 mile. In today's report, I'm going to do a quick highlight of the race course, uh, my goals for the day, and my strategy for reaching those goals. Uh, obviously, my, my race day experience, uh, as well as I'll have a few recommendations for runners looking to run this race in the future. So the Badger Mountain 100 course, um, I'm going to keep this pretty short and sweet for now. I'll be covering it quite a bit through my, my race experience. Um, I also covered this uh, in a race support that I did, I want to say two years ago, uh, I think the first season of the Trail Grinder. So uh, I covered it in quite a bit of detail there, so you can check that out as well. Um, but really the quick highlight, um, obviously it's 100 miles, um, you're going to cover about 14,000 feet of, of gain on this course. Um, I guess before I move forward, uh, the race is held in Richland, uh, Washington. So the Tri-Cities area, um, it's the end of March. Uh, so uh, it's usually from a temperature standpoint, it's usually low to mid sixties uh, during the day. Uh, and then uh, usually mid thirties at night. Um, the course itself is a, it's, it's changed over time, <laughs> over the years. Uh, but, uh, the past few years, it has been a out and back course. So, uh, 50 mile, uh, out and back, uh, the 50 milers and the hundred milers take off together. Um, of course the hundred milers go out on the, on the second loop. Um, the, the big thing that came out of this year that I think I should note in the course review is when people check out the Badger Mountain website and they look at it as a pretty tame 100 in the grand scheme of 100s, um, but uh, it is a sneaky, sneaky, tough <laughs> course. Um, it, it really chews, chews people up and it, it surprises a lot of people. So if you are looking to run this race, uh, keep that in mind that it's a, it's a nasty one. Um, in terms of the terrain that you'll typically run on, uh, it's a mix of everything. Uh, it's kind of one of the reasons I like going to it every year. Um, besides it being a perfect early in the year race in terms of weather. Um, you have uh, mild and moderate and steep climbing that you do. Uh, the climbs aren't massive, but they're still, they can be, they can be tough. Um, it's a mix of single track, you run on road, uh, you, uh, you run through, I guess, gravel uh, at one point, Jeep trails, rolling Jeep trails, uh, depending on the weather, that can be really, really sandy. Um, kind of that, it's almost like that fine, like Martian sort of surface. Um, and then you also run through some rocky sections, which are my personal favorite, um, uh, on the entire course. So it's kind of a nice blend of, uh, of everything. My race goals for this year, uh, there were really two in particular. This year's version of, of Badger Mountain was really more of a training 100 for me, as much as you can have a training 100. Um, my goal race for the year is Mountain Lakes 100. Um, in, at the end of September. So I really wanted to take this race as an opportunity to continue refining and improving uh, essentially the logistics and my approach to 100 mile racing. So uh, pretty simply my goals for this race uh, were one, to complete it, uh, and two, uh, run sub 24 hours. My race strategy uh, for this year uh, was actually, uh, there are a lot of nuances to it, but there are really five key themes. Uh, one is start very patient. Um, I have a, a knack for going out hard. <laughs> I have a hard time holding myself back. So um, my goal was to run the first 50 in 10 hours or longer. Um, and especially the first few climbs, you have a couple climbs right off the bat that um, are easy to kind of take off on and wear yourself out. So stay patient. Uh, the second one was consume a minimum of 200 calories uh, an hour. Uh, the third one was uh, essentially sip and drink water every 10 minutes, uh, which for me roughly comes out to about 20 ounces an hour, maybe a hair more. The fourth one was to be quick in and out of aid stations, um, especially later on in races. I have a knack for sitting and just bleeding time away at aid stations. So uh, I really want to become more efficient at those. I've been getting better. So uh, getting in and out, grabbing what I need and try to keep it as short as possible. Um, so I can buy myself later on in the race in case I do need, need a little extra time. And then the fifth one is more of a mindset thing. Uh, I looked at it as collecting segments. So uh, you'll kind of see it when I kind of go through my race experience, but I look at the race as particular little segments. And so my goal was 
at, in those moments was to tackle those segments, nothing else, not thinking about later on in the race or whatever other thing is going on. It was purely me in that moment, in that segment, and what I needed to do to get through um, that segment in the race. So my race experience. So uh, the race itself starts on a Friday. Uh, usually you drive down, or at least for me, I drive down um, to Richland on Thursday, pick up my uh, race packet. Uh, this year I didn't go to the the dinner beforehand. Uh, honestly, I was feeling pretty pretty lazy and wanted to keep it pretty low key. So uh, ended up having uh, pizza with my wife and watching uh, some NCAA basketball. But um, pretty similar start um, or yeah start to uh, to my race in comparison to previous years. Um, I should probably note, this is my f fifth time uh, going to Badger. My first time there, I ran a 50 mile. Uh, and in the past four years, um, racing the, the 100 mile distance. One of the nice things about um, the Badger Mountain race, whether you're in the 100, the 50, or um, the 50K, or I think 15K is the, the final distance, is uh, the races are essentially right next to town. So it's really easy to find accommodations um, to be able to stay in a hotel if you want, uh, to find food options, um, especially for your crew during the day, it's really easy for them to bounce into town if they need to grab something uh, while you're out on the course. So race day, uh, started out pretty normal for me. It felt pretty good um, getting up. I actually felt like I got a decent night's sleep. I feel like over time, I've been getting better and better uh, that the race jitters aren't as bad. Um, so uh, that's been going well. Uh, ended up getting breakfast beforehand. I'm a pretty big eater beforehand. If if I can eat, um, I usually my go-to's are usually an omelet and then some bread and whatnot with it. So um, I like starting out with some calories in my stomach. I know others don't can't handle it, and it's usually due to race jitters and whatnot. But um, so I like starting out with that. Um, anyway, so yeah, we got to the race start. Race starts at at 7 a.m. And I think uh, I heard from another runner during the race, there were 125 or 130 people who uh, were racing uh, this year. So I don't know what the breakdown of that, of uh, who was in the 50 mile race and who was in the 100 mile race, but um, the 50 mile runners and 100 mile, 100 mile runners start at the same time. Um, so the race starts at 7 a.m. Uh, the sun's already started coming up a little bit, so you're not starting in the dark. And uh, you immediately uh, take off heading straight up Badger Mountain. Uh, which is about a 800 foot climb, uh, maybe 900 foot climb, uh, mainly single track. So this year, uh, it seemed like in comparison to the other years, there were a shit ton of people that just took off right off the bat. Um, and I was in the back, probably third, it felt like, of the, the race pack, maybe further back. Um, and that was really odd. It seemed like there was an abnormal amount of people that took off hard. So uh, for me having an issue with, uh, taking off fast, that obviously was a challenge in my mind, but, um, I knew what I wanted to do for the day. So, um, I stayed back. It also helped that, uh, you know, one of my friends, Matt was, uh, also back there too. And he's, he's experienced, he, he knows what he's doing. So he kind of helped, at least for me, he really helped, uh, keep me back. So we were chatting a little bit and power hiking, easy effort, um, up the first climb. So, uh, from there, um, you head down the backside of Badger. That's really easy to take off to downhill running is my strength. So I really want to take off there, but, um, that's where I did uh, split away from Matt. Um, but I moved at a pretty comfortable pace. It was right with where I wanted to be moving in terms of effort level. Um, for me, I was monitoring my, my heart rate and my effort level quite a bit. Um, I wanted to make sure my heart rate wasn't bouncing up too high, um, especially above like 155, uh, 150 for me early on. So, and I, I pretty much kept it there, uh, maybe a little below 150 at some spots. So um, you come off of Badger. Uh, for me, it roughly takes about, uh, I think it's like 45 minutes or so uh, to get up and over. Um, it's a hair quick on that end uh, for me, but that's, that's pretty common. I'm usually right around there. Um, you run across, a, or you run down a road, maybe a few hundred or a couple hundred yards. Um, and then, uh, you cross over, uh, to climb Candy Mountain. So Candy Mountain is roughly the same gain as Badger. At least I think it is. Um, it's roughly eight or nine, at uh, hundred feet. Um, um, I think in terms of climbing, it's not, 
it doesn't take quite as long it seems like to get up and down it but um the trail itself is pretty steady they in the past used to be just a jeep trail you'd fall straight up it uh they've in recent years put in a nice path so now it's this winding switchbacky type of trail that takes you up uh candy mountain so um Right around there is about an hour into the race, roughly. So that's where I was eating for the first time. Uh, for me, trail mix is steady. It settles well. So that was going to be my go-to for the day. And so I started eating there. Um, I should note there is an aid station that they set up in the parking lot for Candy Mountain, which is right before the climb there. Um, anyway, so you get to the top. And then coming down off of Candy Mountain, is it's kind of rocky. Um, but it's straight down the backside of the mountain. So... Uh, once again, for me being downhill running is my strength. Um, it's easy to want to take off and let gravity take you down the hill, but, uh, reeled myself in and played the easy effort, but tried not resisting too much. I let my body kind of carry me down the hill. So, um, and those are kind of the two, I guess, bigger climbs right off the bat in terms of, uh, uh, where you would do consistent power hiking, uh, early on. Uh, kind of one of the cool, unique aspects of this race is uh, once you finish the Kenny Mountain Climb, uh, you have to cross underneath uh, the highways that are heading into Richland. So uh, there's a culvert that you go through. And the culvert is a little bit of an interesting experience. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of blindness when you first head in there. It's real pitch black initially, and it's a good little distance um, to get through it. So some people will bring their headlamp. Um, for me, I don't want to carry the weight of that or the bulkiness of it. So I just have a little flashlight that I carry with me. Um, but really I only used it for maybe a, I don't know, 30 feet, maybe if that of running, um, in there, uh, before the light from the other end of the tunnel kind of allows you to get through. So, um, anyways, come out through the, the culvert and it leads you up onto, uh, it's not really highway, but it's road, country road that, that you're on. You run along the side of that for a few miles and that takes you to Jacob's road. Um, you start to run across a, or next to a, uh, a vineyard as well. Uh, once again, this is another spot that's really easy to just take off. Um, it's flat. You're usually feeling good still at this point in the race. So um, for me this year, I did timed intervals last year where I ran for 10 minutes, walked for five. I felt like that, that bled a lot of time and it wasn't an efficient use of the course um, for me. So I essentially played averages. So I was trying to run around a 10 minute mile, um, maybe a hair slower, a hair faster in some spots. Um, now I look back at it, I ran a little quick through that section, but it wasn't too terribly quick. I think it was under 30 seconds maybe per mile faster. Um, but still I stuck to my guns in terms of keeping it very easy effort, watching my heart rate. And really my goal was to not to be, not to be working at that point, which is um, what was happening. So, um, you eventually come up to Jacob's Road, uh, that's the next aid station, and it's about 10 miles into the race. And that's really your first kind of full aid station of the race. Um, got in and out of there really quick. I was very pleased with that. Um, that lands, uh, I think I got in there at like an hour 47, hour 50, somewhere in there. Um, so it was a, a hair early, but I counted that as part of my second hour in terms of food. So I got some food, da food down there. Uh, usually my go-to are the, the peanut M&Ms. Um, and try to keep it simple. So in and out pretty quick, filled up the bottles, took off. Uh, the next segment is, uh, some people refer to as the endless vin vineyards. It seems like the first time around, it's not too bad, but in the nighttime, it takes forever. Um, it magically gets longer, uh, but it's about a five mile stretch, maybe a hair longer, uh, where you're running along the outside of a vineyard, kind of winding in and out. Um, and uh, it's a little bit rolling. I would say initially you're heading down, you kind of hit a lower point and then you kind of gradually come out of it, but it's not too much climbing. Uh, this is kind of the gravelly kind of uh, off-road section, I guess, um, but it's not too bad. Uh, not as smooth as pavement, but, um, but yeah. And so uh, completed that section, no issues there. Uh, up to this point, I hit my goals in terms of water every 10 minutes, uh, eating my calories. Um, every hour, and I was feeling super strong, um, pretty steady uh, mentally too. Not too, not too high, not too low. Just kind of um, chugging along. So from there, there are these brutal jeep trails that you go on, um, and they are they are surprising. I kind of call this next section essentially death by a million cuts. 
um, the very first thing you see is this really big dip. It's a steep, steep downhill and then um, a steep, pretty steep, immediate uphill. Uh, with it being kind of damp and the snow just melting off recently uh, in the area, it wasn't too sandy. But in previous years when it's got warm there, uh, it gets pretty sandy and you're kind of slipping and sliding. It's kind of a miserable <laughs> stretch to get through. Um, but there's some up and downs. You get up to, I think, what's called Goat Hill. Uh, maybe you're wrong on that one. But there are a couple little small little climbs. You do a lot of yo-yoing up and down um, through these Jeep trails. Um, it starts getting a little rockier later on with that, but um, you do your yo-yoing up and down, and then that leads you to the Orchard Aid Station. Uh, and so uh, for me, it was a quick, quick in and out. Uh, once again, got my calories in, staying on track. Um, the trail mix was was money. The liquid was going down good. Um, uh, I forgot to mention at Jacobs Road, right around that two hour mark in a race, that's where I like to switch to having kind of split water and electrolyte. So um, I have one of the, I think I have the Ultimate Directions, uh, Steve or um, Scott Jurek uh, vest. So I have two water bottles up front. And so I have one, one that's dedicated to water, one that's dedicated to electrolyte. And I essentially do two sips of water, two sips of electrolyte every 10 minutes. So um, anyways, took off out of Orchard. It's a little bit of a climb right out of there, so you probably don't want to pack your face before <laughs> doing that. Um, something I did do, though, was take food with me and eat it eat it on the run. So that really helps uh, speed up my times in the aid station. So um, anyways, you start to climb out of, uh, out of Orchard, and then it's kind of a gradual... It's still Jeep Trail going up and down a little bit, but it's essentially a gradual downhill down to the field aid station. Uh, and, uh, for me, field aid station isn't, um, a critical aid station. Uh, I, I meet, uh, luckily I have my, my wife with me, so she's my crew. And so I normally see her at McBee. McBee is really the big main aid station that a lot of people head to. So, uh, field is nice if you want to get away from the crowds a little bit, but for me, um, I kind of skipped through it. So ran straight through that. And then, um, it drops you off onto a road, uh, which you follow that road heading up to, uh, the McBee Trailhead. So, and that puts you at a roughly about 23 uh, miles into the race. So the next section of the race is kind of what I deem as my the favorite or my favorite section of the course. Um, there are just little nuances to this section that just drive me nuts and beat me to hell, and it takes too much time. I feel like to get through, it's just a nightmare section for me. Um, but anyway, so I'm at the McBee Aid Station. Uh, Re resupplied, filled up my water bottles. Uh, I, I chugged the Gatorade, got one of those from Ashley, uh, my wife. Uh, so yeah, chugged the Gatorade. Uh, one of my things to start getting solid food in early is I really like uh, the taco wraps, essentially making a mini burrito, uh, doing uh, turkey, guacamole, and bacon. And so I had that uh, with me. I essentially call it a pocket burrito because um, you have a really steep climb coming out of McBee, so I don't dare try to eat that before heading up it. Um, it's the, easily the steepest climb on the course. I think you climb 25 or, uh, sorry, uh, you climb about 1,200 to maybe 1,300 feet in a very short period of time. I think it's like a half mile, if that, um, climb up. So, uh, anyway, so you head on McBee, really steep climb up that. Pretty rewarding though when you get up to the top. Awesome views. You see the entire valley. You see everywhere that you've come so far. Uh, Badger and Candy and the vineyards and everything. So um, there's a quick little resupply at the top. It's mainly it's just a water aid station. So um, it isn't a fully stocked aid station. Um, but yeah, and then from there, I my my favorite part of the favorite uh, little out and back here is. Uh, you essentially go across with this gravel, I don't even know what to call it. It's not really a road, but it sort of is because you can kind of, there's a path um, that could easily have a car going down it. But it's very like loose, loose rock, almost like baseball size rock. Um, it's, it's not smooth running at all. It's a little treacherous. You got to watch your footing. Um, I know a couple other people that seem to enjoy it and don't have too many issues with it. Like they have to take it slower, but they don't mind it. I hate this section. Um, and uh, once again, it's it's a few miles. I think it's four miles, uh, a little over four miles 
uh, to get to Chandler Butte, which is the furthest point uh, from the start finish you'll go uh, during this race. So uh, knowing that this is a problem section for me, I took it pretty easy. Um, there's a slight downhill coming off of that McBee aid station at the top of the climb. So uh, did an easy run uh, down that and then took time to eat, eat my burrito and get some calories uh, into my system. So uh, you know, put that down and then kind of went back to easy running and, and walking the uphills. So I really wanted to make sure I stayed patient, especially during this section, since it can kind of really sap it out of you. So I uh, hit the Chandler Butte uh, aid station, got some food down. They said the magic word of bacon. So um, naturally I had to take a couple slices of bacon with me. Um, and you essentially go straight back out, um, out of that aid station and go and you essentially run across these ridges back to uh, back to the aid station at the top of McBee. So it's a little out and back that you do there. Um, the difference is, is once you hit that aid station again, instead of going down the really steep climb that you came up initially uh, from the McBee aid station, um, you swing out to the right, you follow the ridge line a little bit further, uh, and then you run down a single track. Um, uh, that goes gradually down the side of the ridge, uh, eventually getting you down to the base. And then you run through this, what I kind of call the half pipe section. It's more single track trail, but um, you're kind of in this like, essentially a half pipe um, uh, for a period of time. And so uh, that's about three miles uh, from the top of McBee doing the single track around to get back to the, the McBee aid station. So. Um, the thing I wanted to note here was on my way back, so leaving Chandler Butte and coming back towards McBee, um, I noticed my stomach was not feeling so hot. Um, my energy started going down a little bit and not going to lie, I was a little frustrated because my water was on point, food was on point, and I was trying to figure out I'm not running too hard, it's not too hot. Um, it rained a little, but it was more sprinkling, so um, I was a little confused on where the GI issues were coming from. So, uh, but kept kind of chugging along through it and see if it would just pass, if it was just a phase or, um, or, you know, I had to take action with it. And so I had that kind of toiling in, in my head of <laughs> how serious is this going to be? Um, ended up becoming a, a pretty pressing issue. So when I got to the McBee aid station, um, had my first, first bout of diarrhea, um, and I was not feeling too stoked about that, uh, but got through that immediately tried to get liquids down, food down. I saw Ashley again, it's that same aid station as before. So I got another Gatorade down, uh, resupplied with more trail mix and food and, um, made sure to get some extra liquids down, um, as well as a little bit of food. Cause I didn't want to let that one incidence, uh, really set me back too, too much. So. Uh, once again, my goal was still to be patient at this point. Um, outside of that, I felt like I was doing an amazing job mentally in a good spot. So, um, took off from McBee. Um, it's a slight downhill and essentially you go right back, uh, the way that you came. So, uh, ran to the field aid station. It's a slight climb up, uh, kind of the sandy Jeep roads there. And then you make your way down to orchard. Um, everything was, I would say pretty solid through there, a little up and down, um, energy wise. Uh, but yeah, once I got up to the, uh, the vineyards, uh, the stomach was kind of rumbling again, uh, which I wasn't too stoked about. Uh, but what kind of helped me through this section was actually a few runners I ran into, um, this year's race, I ended up talking to a lot of runners and it was, um, more than previous years. So it was, it was kind of cool to hear different backgrounds and whatnot. So shout out to Drake, uh, Jan and Nicola, uh, the Frenchman, um, that really helped kind of get through that stretch, uh, that stretch, um, and kind of distract me from, you know, annoying GI issues. So, um, yeah, so got into, um, got into the Jacobs road aid station and quickly put down some food and I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. I got to make this quick, um, continue on my, the rhythm that I'd been on. On my way out, I felt like I was kind of tripping out. I thought I saw the the ginger runner, uh, Ethan Newberry, and um, and his wife, Kim, on, on the way out of that aid station. But um, I just kind of kept going because the last thing I wanted to do was like randomly stop people and be like horribly mistaken and feel like I'm tripping out. So that was a little early to be tripping, but I was like, oh, whatever, I'll keep moving. Um, eventually, Drake caught back up with me 
and yeah, we both commented, oh yeah, that was the ginger runner. So I was like, oh, I missed my opportunity. Um, cause that guy's a huge inspiration. I wanted to, I wanted a high five. So, um, but I figured, oh, maybe, maybe see him later on. Um, I think he was crewing or pacing a, a friend of his out there. So anyways, uh, continued down the road stretch, went up and down Candy Mountain, stomach was getting even fussier um it it was definitely slowing me down which at that point i wasn't moving that fast anyway which uh was was starting to worry me a little bit but sometimes these things pass so i just continue to stay positive uh focusing on on my segments and trying to uh, hit my water goals my food goals which i was still hitting um all those by the way uh through that stretch so um got up and over badger and then um got down to the 50 mile turnaround point uh to get ready to head off onto the the second loop so i tried to make my stay at the turnaround point pretty quick um it was a little longer than than i wanted but i wanted to make sure i got my headlamp um because of the timing of heading into that uh that aid station it was about 10 uh i think i got into that aid station at uh 10 hours 10 minutes 10 hours 15 minutes so it was actually right on pace with uh my goals uh, for this race, uh, but I wanted to get my headlamp and whatnot, so I had to dig that out. Um, grabbed another Gatorade. I put down some soup um, as well as uh, a quesadilla as well to get a little extra calories in. Uh, the burrito was not not sounding <laughs> good at that point, um, which worried me a little bit because uh, usually I can get some calories down. And it was a little early for me to um, be worried about that. So, anyways, got my got a resupplied and everything and took off up Badger. Uh, Drake, who I'd ran with essentially the last 15 miles of that first loop, uh, he stuck around uh, with his crew, uh, getting in a few extra calories. It was his first 100, so I think he did a really good job pacing himself and staying slow and not going out too hard there. So, um, But anyways, my stomach was really starting to bother me. It was just steadily getting worse and worse and worse, which um, is not good. So, But I knew that if I continued to shove calories down my throat and and water and whatnot and and stay patient and slow that uh, this could theoretically pass so um that said i pulled into the candy mountain aid station and uh it was round two of diarrhea so um this was going to be a problem (laughs) for a little while so um got through that uh started my climb up candy mountain and then i saw something i've never seen before And it was not one, not two, but three rainbows um, out over Ridgeland. I thought that was the trippiest thing. Um, I've seen double rainbows, but this was a solid, like two solid rainbows and then a slightly faded third one. So that was a really cool view um, heading uh, heading up that climb. So... Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier on when I was coming down uh, Candy Mountain, heading back to the the 50 mile turnaround, I ended up seeing the Ginger Runner again. So I got my high five after all. So that was pretty cool. Um, anyways, yeah, up and over uh, Candy Mountain, uh, got to the culvert, got through that. Um, I'm starting to feel pretty sluggish though. Um, obviously, the gut is not feeling great. Um, so it was pretty pretty slow jogging, but I was still still moving um, at a good clip. I was a little above. Uh, 20 hour finish time like pacing so um i was doing doing great at this point um and then it started getting a little dark and uh jacob's road was where i was gonna meet um ashley to change into some night clothes switching into night clothes is probably my least favorite (laughs) like part in a race i feel like it takes a ton of time um it's something i need to do um but I just, I feel like it, it, it's a weird pause in the middle of the race. So I've been trying to figure out ways to improve that. This particular stop to change clothes was actually a pretty quick one. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I uh, changed my clothes at the Jacob's Road Aid Station, uh, got my bottles all filled up again. One of the things I like to do in the middle of this race is to have uh, a fairly high calorie thing at that point. So I uh, ended up having a burger for the road. So uh got that from from my wife and then just slowly started chewing away on that Um, obviously with the gi issues (laughs) that i was not anticipating heading into this point um that definitely slowed things down and make it made it a little more challenging to to eat that burger so um it it took a while to chew through it i think i've spent a good 15 minutes slowly chewing away at this thing but i did get it down so that was a solid 800 calories at least that i got got into my body um, I was happy with that, <laughs> just getting the calories in my system. Um, liquids were staying 
I was still hitting all my goals um, up to this point in terms of calories, liquids, and everything. So hitting my segments, all of that. So um, kind of slowly got back into the trot um, at that point. It was a little stiffer, but um, still not too bad. Still hit my pacing the way kind of where I wanted to be in terms of effort level. Um, hit those wonderful Jeep trails. Um, got into Orchard, and it was as I was leaving Orchard, um, it felt like my GI issues were kind of shifting. It, it, instead of going uh, going out the one direction, it felt like it was shifting the other way. So nausea was starting to build up, uh, which, as you can imagine, I was pretty stoked to be feeling this at this point. Um, because, uh, you know, I was following my plan to a T and now I'm deal I've been dealing with these issues all day that honestly, sometimes you can't anticipate some of it. So, um, but anyways, yeah, I got into the field aid station starting to feel more and more like shit. Um, but still focused on staying on top of everything. Food was starting to get a little tough to get down, but, um, was still staying on track with that. Uh, saw my wife again at McBee. Uh, downed another Gatorade, uh, wanted nothing to do <laughs> with, the, with the burritos. So uh, I, I took uh, some more trail mix with me, um, grabbed a few things, and then, and then went up the McBee, uh, the McBee climb for the night segment uh, on my favorite part of the course. So my favorite part, or my favorite part of the course, 2.0, um, this is normally the the segment that really just destroys me at this race, or at least where my mind goes to shit and um, you know problems start to arise. Um, that said, I felt pretty strong mentally at this point. I felt confident with what I was doing. Um, obviously, the GI stuff was a problem, but I was still feeling pretty good, moving really well, still pretty mobile. Um, I thought everything was still going pretty well given given circumstances. So. I uh, got up the McBee climb. Um, I felt at a good clip. I was pretty pleased with how that went. Um, and then I started my way across the ridge to get to the Chandler Butte. And uh, that's where the nausea really started getting nasty. Um, there were a few points where I thought I was going to end up puking across that stretch. I was regurgitating. Um, uh, food was pretty much a no-go. I was not wanting to put it down. Like I would put down a little bit of trail mix and wanted to spit it back up. Um, water was still going down, but that wasn't exactly an easy process. Uh, hit Chandler Butte. Um, I ran into, um, uh, uh, my friend, uh, Matt ran into him again. We kind of yo-yoed a little bit, uh, heading into Chandler Butte, got in Chandler Butte, sat down, uh, focused on having some soup, chicken noodle soup, and try to give my body a second to kind of settle a little bit. Um, hopefully the soup would help out with the stomach, especially since I was kind of more of the pukey nausea. Um, you know, Matt came in, I, he was having issues. Um, I, I don't remember if he ended up puking at all, but that's what he was dealing with as well. Um, I ran into a couple other runners that were running into kind of pukey issues too. So I'm um, not sure what they specifically ran into, but it was a common thing. So anyways, got out of that, that aid station. Uh, worked my way across the ridge again. It felt even longer. It didn't feel like four miles. It felt way longer than that. But um, yeah, I got to the, the aid station at the top of McBee, feeling like shit. Um, sat down for a minute, tried to re recoup, and <laughs> just essentially taking it segment by segment at this point. Um, that nausea just continued getting worse. Stumbled out of that aid station. Um, started to work my way down the, the single track. Running was now really, really tough. Um, it seemed like as soon as I kind of got my legs moving, which legs felt good, um, that uh, the nausea really ramped up. So um, this was the first segment of the race where I, I didn't hit my food goals for about um, at least two hours, which is not good. Um, not awful given the experience of everything going on in the race, but it's still not good to miss those, those goals there. So, but the water was, was still kind of going down. Um, slowly made my way off of, uh, the McBee and the Ridge there. Um, very close to puking a handful of times, but kind of was able to keep it together. Got to the McBee aid station. I was like, all right, I gotta take some time. I gotta, I gotta get things right here. Have some soup. Um, the other thing that really worried me too, I forgot to mention this, is um, I started um, urinating a lot. Like I usually have a challenge uh, trying to do that every two hours. That's kind of the rule of thumb. Um, and I probably 
went like 16 times in a matter of that stretch that of my favorite loop, um, which was only a couple hour period. So um, I was really tripping out on that. Um, it seemed like everything was fine on that end. It was just mainly getting more food into my system and just watching my electrolytes a little closer, but it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So um, in the moment, not thinking clearly, I was definitely tripping out on that. Um, but, uh, aid station crew was great. My wife gave me the, the big boot to get out of that aid station, even though I didn't really didn't feel like moving, but, uh, it was a wise decision, uh, sitting by a fire and getting toasty by that. All I was going to do is get cold, uh, leaving that aid station. So that was good. But I started my, my death march, um, down, uh, down the McBee road in full pain cave mode at this point. I was deep in the pain cave. Um, and uh, had to stop again. What thought I was really close to puking, Ashley happened to come by and said, that, hey, I'm gonna see you at Jacobs um, and really kind of continued to push me along. So um, she took off and then I continued down the road. Um, but unfortunately in the next like, I think it's like a half mile, I ended up puking a couple of times on the side of the road. Pretty much everything I was in my stomach was out. Um, I felt like I had nothing else to give in terms of my stomach at that point. Um, got into the field aid station and uh, apparently I didn't say much. I just went straight in. They had these like hay blocks that I went straight to and just, I told them I need to sleep and I laid down and fell asleep. Um, so, uh, I don't know how long I was asleep. It must have not been that long. They woke me up and tried to get me out of the aid station. Um, but I was having a really hard time. No food was going down. Um, ginger ale was was a, a really big struggle i mean for a dixie cup and you're only like sipping on it sort of thing i was having a really hard time and i was feeling really nauseous um mixed that with definitely some disappointment coming in at that point um it went downhill i felt so fast um heading into McBee and that whole loop and everything uh the puking really really took it to the next level um in terms of things going downhill fast and so um we decided, uh, me and the, the aid station crew to, to sleep a little bit and see if the sun rises, uh, maybe I can grind it out. So obviously the 24 hour thing wasn't going to happen at this point. It was just try to finish the race. And so, uh, slept a little longer, woke up, uh, tried getting more ginger ale down and, but it just, it wasn't happening. And so, um, I knew I wasn't going to be running the rest of the day. Um, and it was going to be be a pretty big slog. Um, if this is what wasn't going to be a, like a couple hour adventure, like I'm going to be utilizing the rest of the day. So, um, so I ended up, uh, DNFing at mile 83, uh, of the race. So, um, I was pretty disappointed at that point, but I knew it was the wise decision. Um, I didn't want to risk injuring myself, um, or doing something stupid and really hurting myself. Um, I felt like I gave my max at that point. Obviously my, my body and my stomach were not agreeing with me and um, I thought it was just a wise decision to, to step, step away there. So, um, yeah, I gave Ashley a call and then she came in, uh, and picked me up. DNFing is, is not fun. Um, especially, especially for me, I felt like, uh, you know, I used to hate running, got into running. I felt, uh, I accelerated to the ultra realm, I, I would say fairly quick. Um, and I was able to finish races, even if they were miserable, but the hundred mile distance has been, has been a whole nother beast. Um, it's one of the reasons I keep heading back to it. There are no guarantees with it. Um, and this race was a perfect example of that. Um, despite following my plan to a T in terms of fueling and, and hydration and even my mental mindset through it, um, to the end, uh, it, sometimes it just, it doesn't work out, um. I essentially had to battle a GI issues for over 40 miles between the diarrhea and the puking and whatnot. So, um, sometimes it just, it doesn't work out on that end. Um, after some reflection af you know, after this race, it's been a few days now. Um, I think, uh, I definitely ate some contaminated food out on the course. Um, I felt all the other variables were controlled, uh, in terms of the food that I was putting into my body, either things I had ate in the past or I've had no issues with over a long history. Um, so the pacing, the temperature, not, uh, you know, the effort level, none of that was there to really cause a lot of those issues. So, um, you know, it's the risk you run when you stick your hand into a, a bowl of food that, you know, everybody else is putting their hands in. Um, so with multiple races going on and, 
and you know who knows what what those racers are doing so um it sucked i'm disappointed um definitely frustrated over it but um also encouraged i felt like it was my best run race to this point um and that's a lot to be said because last year um, I placed second at uh, Pigtails 100 race, and I felt like I ran that race too, once again, to a T. Um, but in terms of logistics, uh, everything around, whether it was the night, clothing change, food, water, everything, um, I felt like I executed to a T. Um, but it just uh, it wasn't meant to be this year. So, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of tough to swallow. But uh, But once again, good learning experience and... Um, really helps me build towards uh, the Mountain Lakes 100 race uh, towards the end of this year. So my recommendation uh, for runners that are looking to run the Badger Mountain race in, in future years, a um, couple of them. Number one is don't underestimate the course. Uh, start out slow, be patient. Um, there were a lot of runners that ended up dropping from this race because they went out way too hard. So um, definitely, definitely stay patient. I know that's one of the things that's really helped me, um, improve at this race, um, over time and, and have a little bit more longevity. So it's a pretty common rule with most 100s anyway. Number two is to dial in your nutrition. So, um, I'm not going to dive into all of that, but obviously you should be practicing a lot of what you're going to be eating during the race, um, and your fueling habits before getting to the race. Uh, and then within the race, right, what are you going to eat? What works well for you? And then really the biggest thing is consistently eat. So I forgot the runner I uh, heard, uh, heard that said, I want to say Magdalena Goulet, but uh, the, essentially the sip and nibble concept, the idea of you're constantly sipping on your water and electrolytes and you're constantly uh, nibbling away on, on food. Um, if you stick to that, that regimen, you should be doing pretty well for yourself um, in terms of the energy and the, and the liquids that you need. And then my third recommendation uh, that's a little bit more specific to Badger is uh, in terms of understanding your pacing and how you're going to get through sections um, and how long it's going to take you and whatnot is essentially my, my favorite section. Uh, up on the top of McBee and that ridge to Chandler Butte, uh, because the elevation profile isn't crazy, it's relatively, well, it's rolling hills uh, through that section, it's relatively flat. Um, a lot of runners think they're going to make up some time there or it'll be similar to when they're going through the vineyards or maybe even the jeep trails um, that'll not be the case because of the rock and what it's like it's pretty rocky through there um, it's gonna slow you down and it's gonna sap energy so my biggest recommendation is to think about that section taking longer than normal and understand that you're probably going to lose some time there so um, and to not stress about that Thank you so much for watching my race recap of the 2019 Badger Mountain Challenge uh, 100 mile. Um, really means a lot for you to watch. Uh, keep an eye out for upcoming videos. Um, I have my Wallace Falls 50K uh, race report, which is way delayed. That was a few weeks ago. Um, as well as I'm going to do a recap of my recent training block leading up to Badger. Uh, what were the ins and outs of it? How did I approach it and build it? Um, my background is in exercise science. Um, so that's kind of where I get to have a little bit of fun in terms of, uh, you know, structuring everything around these races. So anyways, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and then make sure to, to, uh, like and subscribe to the channel so you can see future videos. So, um, I've already posted a few training uh, tip videos and I plan to post more of those, uh, later this year as well. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching and uh, have a happy and healthy race season.